What's up guys, it's Drew Kimball from Brain Trust Creative back with you again. Today, we are looking at what it looks like to use ProPresenter for a live stream. So what I'd love to do is I'd love to walk you through uh, how we might build a typical remote production. Maybe that production has uh, a countdown to get the audience ready for the live stream. Maybe it has a live host that's gonna do some intros. Maybe you play back a few videos or show a few graphics. Uh, maybe you bring in a guest over Skype uh, and have an interview with him. So let's talk through some different scenarios uh, in setting up a live stream in Pro 7. The first thing we wanna do is think about setting up our pre-show. What do people see when they're log on to the stream, but the stream hasn't started yet. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna create a new, we're gonna create a new document here, a new presentation. Here is our document. You can see it's blank, it's got no slides here. Let's build a pre-show look real quickly here. I'm gonna go into the edit mode. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just give this a bit of a background. Maybe, maybe there's sort of like our brain trust background here this is our brain pattern we're gonna throw this in and then uh, maybe we'll maybe we need to add our brain trust logo so I'm gonna bring that in we'll shrink that down kind of put that up here maybe it needs a little bit of like a like a drop shadow give that like a nice little blur maybe we're getting ready here so maybe I'll take our text and I'm gonna just move it back to the front and I'm gonna shrink it down and I'll say something like live stream begins in, and I'll put a little colon there, right align it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste that text and I'm gonna move it over here next to it. You can see our alignment guides kind of snap. I'm gonna left align this, and instead of putting text here, I'm gonna go over here on the right and I'm gonna choose linked text. This is a new feature in Pro 7 that allows me to link, link the text in this box to the text somewhere else. So I'm gonna to go to timers, pre-show countdown, and now you can see the text in this box is linked to our pre-show countdown. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that it uh, doesn't show any hours and doesn't show any milliseconds. Uh, so I can, I can tune that in. Now it's just minutes and seconds. And I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Maybe make this like 100 so that looks kind of cool. Maybe move this over with my arrow keys a couple times. So now I've got sort of a, a, a pre-show countdown. So if I were to fire this slide, you'd see over here in our program that the live stream begins in and the timer's not there. That's because the timer's not actively running. So if I go to my timers palette and I say pre-show countdown, and I'm gonna say, let's say we're gonna start at noon, I'll set it to 12 p.m., I'll get it going. I'll hit start and now you can see in our slide the live stream begins in 41 minutes. Everybody get ready, log on, whatever. This is a great way to do a pre-show look. So very simply, we stacked up a few things, added a live timer to this, and now we're ready to go. The next thing we might want to open with is maybe our host intros everybody. So I'm gonna set up an input for that. Let's say our host is coming in over a camera. So if I go to preferences here, to our video input tab of that preferences, I'm gonna add a video input and I'm gonna call this host. And then I'm gonna link this to a video source. Now, if I had a, a input box, for example, on this machine, I've got a Blackmagic Duo card uh, in a Sonnet uh, Thunderbolt enclosure. You'll see I have those four ports there. I could choose that if I were bringing in an SDI line for a camera. In this case, I don't have a camera plugged in there. I'm just gonna use my FaceTime camera. That way you'll just see me here. Uh, so there we go, I've got, I've got that input set up, so I'll close this out. So I'm gonna come down to the bottom left here to our video input bin. I'm gonna hit the plus button and I'm gonna add input one host, there it is. So I'll bring that in, now this is here, okay? So if I were to fire that off, you'd see, there I am on the screen and I could get myself ready and I could do my live stream. Now, one thing you need to understand is live inputs come into this video input layer, which is the bottom most layer, which would mean if I were to fire that pre-show slide, it actually took over. You can see stacked up right here, that slide is on top of that video input, which meant if I wanted to go to that video input again, and I went and I clicked on it down here, nothing would happen. Okay, that can be confusing. You have to understand that the way this is stacked up. So I actually have to clear this slide 
and then it reveals the video underneath. Now, this is great if you want your video as a base layer, and then you're gonna stack graphics on top of it. Maybe that's lyrics, maybe that's uh, a bug in the corner you wanna stack on top of it. That can be really powerful. But in our case, we wanna treat this like a switcher. We wanna just toggle around everything as fast as we can. So the key here is don't have this on a video layer. Have it as a foreground element, okay? So I'll clear this. I'm gonna right click or control click on this and say behavior foreground. Now it gives a little icon to help me understand that. Now when I fire it, you'll see that it actually came in on a layer right here, which is our media layer, okay? Now media layer can be confusing. There's video input layer, media layer, slide layer, all that kind of stuff, and they stack on top of each other. Just know this, if an item is set as a foreground element, okay, it plays on the media layer, but it knows to tell the slide layer to clear so that you can see it. Watch how it works. I can go to my slide here. It's gonna fire it. There it is, okay? If I trigger my input, it knows to clear that and automatically take it to the media layer. So you can kind of ignore layers at this point and just toggle back to the different things you want it to work on. There's my intro. There's me as the host. Kind of like using a switcher, just punching around to the different inputs, okay? So now what if I wanted to kind of brand myself? Like a live input, fully full screen is great, but maybe I want to kind of brand myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a new slide here. I'm going to go to my edit mode. I'm going to create a new slide, just a blank one. We can get rid of this text. I don't really need it. And maybe I'll bring in another pattern here. Maybe just the gray brain trust pattern here. Maybe that'll make like a nice backdrop. And then what I want to do is I want to bring in a shape hold down option, I'm gonna stretch it out here. Maybe I'll make it a little, a little bit of like an inset here. So now I'm gonna go over to shape and down by fill. And instead of color fill, I'm gonna choose video input. And once I do that, you can see the box itself kind of gets a slashed pattern telling me this box will be filled with a video input. Now, this doesn't just have to be a rectangle. It could be a circle or a shape or a whatever you want. You could really make something look terrible. But for, for our sake, we're just gonna do this kind of nice picture in picture here. And you can see that I've set it to be the input host. That's taken that same input from our preferences. Now, the thing we have to remember here is the scaling. Right now, it's set to scale to fit which meant if I made this a weird shape, it would actually shrink that input to fit in the shape. So I wanna change this to scale to fill. And while if your shape is weird, it may crop some, it's gonna make sure that it totally fills that shape. Now, one of the downsides right now with Pro is that uh, for whatever reason, video input objects can't have drop shadows. I think they're trying to accommodate for if you were to give something with an alpha channel, you would have to real time make that drop shadow of the alpha channel. But right now you can't have a drop shadow. So if I wanted this nice little pip to have a drop shadow, I kind of have to cheat. So I'm gonna take this object, I'm gonna copy it and paste it. And now technically I have two, I'm just gonna line it back up on each other. And I'm gonna select the one underneath. Now there's a couple of ways to do that. Down in the lower left, you can see I've got my objects. I could just select the one underneath. This is kind of like a layers palette, uh, if you're familiar with Photoshop or, or Illustrator. The other way to do it is to right click on something and you'll see select element here. That allows me to select things lower down underneath the chain in that area. So I'm gonna select the second one, that's the one underneath. And I'm gonna come back to fill here. I'm gonna change that back to color. Um, and you can see now I've got my video over that color. And, and for grins, I'm just gonna make that black but I can give this box a shadow. Once the video is on and covers it up, we won't see the black box. We'll see me uh, as input one over that shadow. Head back to my show, fire that slide. And now you can see here I am inside the box, right? And the box has a shadow. It's kind of a bummer that I had to cheat that way and put a box underneath it. Hopefully in a future version, they'll update these uh, video input objects to be able to handle that drop shadow. But until then, this is a great workaround. So now I've got this kind of nice branded look. It's got our, our brain trust pattern around it. It's got me and it looks a little more produced than just taking it live, right? Next step. What if we wanted to bring in a guest via Skype? Well, we can do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up Skype here. And I'm gonna call our good friend Jeff Ponder, uh, who's a Brain Trust's uh, director of all things video. And Jeff is over in the edit suite uh, doing work on a project, but we're just gonna kind of spy on him for a second. So I'm gonna give Jeff a call here over Skype. 
hopefully Jeff answers and doesn't hang up on us. Um, okay, looks like he's joining the call here, getting his video going. What's up, Jeff? How's it going? All right, so now Skype has a call. So the question is, how do we get that in to Pro 7? Well, the easiest answer right now is Skype's NDI feature, okay? So you can, uh, if you go to Skype's preferences, under calling, advanced, you're gonna see there's a new switch here for NDI. Now we've got this turned on, you're gonna wanna make sure it's on, okay? And what this does is it actually publishes out Jeff's feed as an NDI IP video feed. And Pro can handle that no problem. So if I come back to Pro, preferences, video input, we're gonna add one more, we're gonna call it Jeff, just so I've got that. And then under video source, you're gonna see all of a sudden on my local machine, I've got some Skype things going on, okay? The one that says local is Skype's local feed. So that's actually again the FaceTime camera because that's what Skype is sending to Jeff, all right? Active speaker, that's a switched feed. If you had four or five people on the call, you know how Skype puts them to the front whenever they talk? That's what that feed, it kind of auto switches. But you'll notice there's one here with a little ID and it's a string of random digits. That's Jeff. Okay, now how do I know that that's Jeff? Well, I know because he's the only one on the call. Um, if you log in with a particular Skype name, it'll put that Skype name there. Um, but for some people, you may find it just puts that random digits. Um, now, every time they call in, it might be a different set of random digits. So before you take them live, you're just gonna wanna confirm you've grabbed the right input. So we're gonna choose this here. This is how we know what Jeff is. Close this up, come back to our video input, and now we're gonna add Jeff. And we're gonna make sure, again, behavior, foreground so that he shows up. Now, if I just take that, there's Jeff. Jeff's on the live stream now. You can see his audio's coming in. Now, one thing you may notice, Jeff's audio is only coming down the left channel. That's because Skype only publishes a mono audio feed. How do we fix that? Well, if we right click on this, go to the inspector, it's gonna bring up a way to deal with Jeff. Now, there's some nice things we could do here. Under effects, we could add color effects. So if I wanted to tweak uh, the exposure of Jeff's shot, I can do that. Really nice to be able to add a couple of effects if I needed to. But under audio, channel routing, you're gonna see I have the ability to route all the audio channels of that NDI feed to a different destination in Pro. So what I wanna, wanna do is make sure that Jeff's channel one, that's the one we know is coming in, goes to both Pro channel one and Pro channel two. Basically, we're gonna put his feed down both sides, a nice full mono uh, track there so he doesn't sound like he's off to the left in our stream. Close this, refire it, and now you can see you've got audio coming in on both channels. So now Jeff is full mono, ready to go. We can, we're gonna be able to hear him whenever we take him. So there's Jeff. I can bounce between Jeff and me uh, just as I would punching through different things in the switcher, okay? Uh, I can change the transition just like I would any other slide or cue element, okay? I can dip to me here and it's ready to go. Um, let's say I wanted next to build a two up pip with me and Jeff having a conversation together. Well, I can do that. If I go to the uh, edit mode, maybe I'll just uh, maybe I'll just duplicate this slide and work off of it here. So I'll move these over, shrink them up. Maybe that'll be for me. So now I'm gonna take that input and its drop shadow rectangle, copy them, paste them. We're gonna move them over here. We're gonna get them resized. I'll stretch Jeff out, give him, he's the featured guest. I'll give him a little more screen space. Then I'm gonna select that, that shadow rectangle and drop it over. And then what I'm gonna do is on this video input, I'm just gonna make sure to come over here and say, have it as input two. The one on the left, input one. The one on the right, input two. So if I come back to my show here and I trigger this slide, you're gonna see here Jeff and I are live at the same time. So if I were doing this in a narrow thing, I'd, I'd frame myself up in the camera and I'd know that Jeff is right there and I could say, what's up Jeff, how's it going? Jeff could talk back to me. We could do a whole Skype conversation, right? Great way to add guests. And I could build more than one of these and just change the inputs. So if I wanted to swap Jeff and I, I would just duplicate this slide swap the inputs on those objects, right? Then I could have a whole setup. Um, if I were, yeah, so I can go in here and uh, duplicate this slide and just change this one to input two, this one here, 
to input one. So if I come over and I fire it, now you'll see me in the wider screen and, and Jeff on that side, okay? Um, might be helpful to you as you're going to give these slides a label, All right? So I might give it a label that says Jeff and host. That way I'll know what that is. Maybe I'll give this one a label that says host and Jeff. That'll help me remember who's on what side. So now I know if I toggle us back and forth, that'll work fine. I can take me back to the thing and we're kind of bouncing around. We could cut our whole show this way, all right? Then I could bring in any other playback. If I bring in a video here and I play that video, there it goes, it's playing its audio. Wow, wasn't that a great video clip? Thanks so much for joining us on our stream. All right, then I might need a little ending title. So what I'll go here back to edit and I'm actually gonna duplicate our pre-show slide. Uh, but I'm just gonna get rid of the timer and I'll change this to thanks for joining our live stream. Center that up, put it nice here in the middle and we're ready to go. Put that at the end. So now I could say, thanks so much for joining us. Make sure you subscribe to our awesome live stream. And then I could just fire content here at the end and there it goes. So you can see we can bounce around between cameras, pip setups, playing back content, no problem. So now it's time for the finishing touches. Uh, we may wanna give Jeff a little lower third title so that everyone knows who it is when he comes on the show. Uh, we may wanna build um, a little bug that tells everyone it's live, some stuff like that. So let's, let's jump in and see how we might build some graphics. Okay, the easiest thing we wanna do, and, I, and you'll see why I do it this way in just a minute, is I'm gonna actually add a graphic right to this slide. I'm gonna add some text here. We're gonna put in Jeff's name here. It's Jeff Ponder. And I'm gonna do uh, text scaling. I'm gonna fit the container to the text. What that means is the text container is gonna shrink to how much text I have. And that makes it easier uh, to deal with uh, when we're trying to do a cool background. So I might put this right down here in front of Jeff. Maybe we make it bigger. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then and then on the shape, I wanna give it like a fill, but maybe I'll make it like, um, maybe I'll make it black, but like a little bit transparent. Maybe we'll come here to our margins and give it maybe just a little more room, maybe like 10 at the top and 10 at the bottom. Now. I want this to be on its own layer because I want to be able to turn it on and off and not always be forced to have it on the shot. But I want to make sure it lines up nice, which is why I've built it on this slide. One of the great things is when I copy and paste from slide to slide or cue to cue, it keeps the positioning. So now that I've built this and it's kind of where I want it, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to cut it. Then I'm gonna to go to my props editor because I wanna build this on the props layer. The props layer is like a layer that lives independently above other cues fired. And I'm just gonna come here to this and I'm gonna paste it. And it put it in the same place on the slide, uh, which then I know will line back up. So this will be my Jeff title here. So if I come back to the show, so let's say I fire, uh, me on one side, Jeff on the other, and I'm gonna bring in Jeff's title so everyone knows who it is. I'm gonna open up my props palette here, and you can see there's my prop with Jeff. Okay, and if I fire that, it comes in, in the right place, right over Jeff with transparency, and you'll see it's actually living on this props layer here. I could clear that layer, bring it back in, uh, and that way, uh, I could, the first time we go to Jeff, maybe I introduce him, there's his name, all is good. I'll click this X here and clear it. Now when I come back to it, I don't need it all the time, right? So, so a great way to have uh, uh, titles, lower thirds, those kind of graphics that exist above everything else, all right? In fact, if I come back to my props editor, maybe I'll build a little uh, live bug. So I'm gonna do a little, little kind of maybe rounded rectangle, double click in there and say, live I mean, let's do like a like a little gold color here that might work and then uh, we'll kind of resize that crunch it in there so now we've got our little live bug so the thing about props is you can actually have more than one running at one time right and and they run independently of slides so i could bring in that live uh, bug and there it is living over everything and that stays even if I fire slides underneath so just telling your users you're watching a live experience right um, 
you could also additionally bring in that title we built. They can exist at the same time. And you'll notice that they kind of stack up here and I can clear them independently. Um, so I can clear that live bug or I can clear that title bring in that live bug. So those are kind of some nice finishing touches you can add to make it feel like you've really layered up content to show everybody what you're what you're doing. So you can see I've built up here uh, the whole way to do a live stream. Now, the question is, how do I get this out to the internet as a live stream? Well, um, in a previous version, what you'd need to do is you'd need to output what Pro is doing and send it to something that was encoding it, something like OBS uh, or, or Wirecast or any other a hardware encoder, for example. Um, but just released actually a couple days ago was some new features in Pro 7.1 that might enable me to do this direct from Pro. So you'll notice it gained up here, right above our layers, this new kind of button called Live. And what that lets me do is it lets me send out a certain screen of Pro if I'm using more than one, I can pick um, to a live stream. So uh, an RTMP stream, something like YouTube or Facebook would use, you just, you go to those settings, copy it and the key from your uh, account, paste them in here, pick your quality level um, all the way up to 1080p 60 uh, and hit start. That starts broadcasting whatever Pro 7's screen is doing out to that feed. Then you could start your live stream there and you're good to go, all right? It even allows you to save a local copy. You're allowed to um, save that stream as a file, which is pretty nice. If you don't want a live stream, they have a new thing now uh, where you can stream right out to disk and pick up uh, a quality, even as much as ProRes 444 with Alpha Channel, you could send that right out. And that would save it to disk at whatever size you wanted to. So a great way to record your stream for later use. Um, big caveat here, audio. Audio right now in Pro 7 uh, is very limited. You can see that we had audio when we brought in Jeff full screen, right? Um, but for example, if I'm using my FaceTime camera, no audio comes with it. You'll see the meters there are dead, right? And so you'd think, man, I'd like to plug in a microphone and just use an audio input. Pro 7 right now has no audio inputs. It only brings in audio with a video source. So you'd have to embed that into a video source and play that back. One potential workaround is bring in an audio feed embedded on an SDI line, fire it to the video input layer so it's always live, and then you've got an audio mix coming through. It's not a great workaround and you need some gear to do it. It's kind of a bummer. Um, the other thing you'll notice is when it's a slide object, no audio is coming through from Jeff or from me. Slide objects do not pass audio at this time. Another huge bummer. Um, we've reached out to Renewed Vision. We've talked to them about a few things. We're hoping they're gonna add audio controls. They've mentioned they're gonna add some more robust audio features in, in new versions. Uh, but right now we're limited to playing back full screen to get audio, uh, playing a video source with audio, playing a video file with audio, that kind of a thing. So right now we can't recommend using Pro's embedded live streaming features because we can't figure out a way to get an uh, audio mix to it that works. Here's how we're doing it now. We're using Pro 7 for video and it's great at that. It's outputting video perfectly, okay? What we're doing is a separate audio mix on an audio console. We're sending both of those out independently to a different machine that could be running Pro 7 to stream it, a second copy of Pro 7 to stream it. Or you could use a tool like OBS or Wirecast or any of the other streaming softwares that can take an audio and a video feed, marry them together and stream them. So it's kind of a bummer that we need to use a, a, a third or fourth piece of gear or software to do this. Um, that's just where we're at right now. The reason we've chosen to use Pro 7 is because of the ease of what I just built there, toggling between inputs, toggling between uh, arrangements of pips. It's a lot more intuitive and robust than a lot of the uh, casting software out there. And especially if you're used to already using Pro 7 in your live environment, you and your volunteers or your crew may be great at building these looks. It just right now has to function inside of a production ecosystem. 
audios run separately, something else doing the streaming at the, at the end, even if that's another copy of Pro 7. So one day, if they add new, new audio features, this is gonna turn into a genuinely powerful streaming tool. Okay, for now though, just know that you need it to be a part of your broader production workflow. Thanks so much for joining us today, taking a look at how you could use Pro 7 in a live streaming environment. Hopefully this inspires you to build some of your own content and take a look at the tools you've been using in a live world. Think about how you could pivot them and use them in a virtual world. Definitely hit us up in the comments below if you've got questions or thoughts and uh, we'll see you again soon.